Hey guys, welcome to a new video of this Neural Networks and Deep Learning tutorial. In this video here, we're going to talk about data augmentation. So first of all, we're going to talk about like what, it, what is data augmentation, uh, why should we use data augmentation, also like how we are doing data augmentation. So this is a really nice and cool fe uh, feature that we can use when we train neural networks, both uh, with like uh, convolutional neural networks, when we have like an image data set, then how can we actually like use data augmentation to get more data in our data set and also to reduce overfitting and stuff like that in our neural network. So. First of all, remember to join us to this sure, I'll link to it down in the description where we talk about different kind of stuff within uh, neural networks, deep learning, computer vision, and artificial intelligence. And also, if you have some problems with some of your projects that you're doing on your own, like you can go ask the questions in there and uh, maybe I can answer or some of the other guys can answer or just come, come chat with us. So first of all, we're going to talk about like what is data augmentation. So data augmentation is when we're actually like augmentating uh, data or like the images that we have in our in our in our in our data set so we have some different kind of changes and we're also uh, we, we have like more data because we have like greater variance and differences so we change our images it could be for example that we're rotating our image or we're flipping our image to actually like get more samples from the same image so we can have like for example here we can have one image here and then we can actually like flip the image here on both the, the vertical and the horizontal axis and then we can also like uh, rotate our, our image here to actually like get more images. We can, we can shear it, we can rotate it, we can do a lot of different kind of stuff that I'll show you like how we can actually like apply that um, in Keras. So this is a really cool and nice uh, feature that we can use when we're actually like training neural networks because we can have one sample of data or like we can have a really small uh, data set and then we can just use data augmentation to get more data samples or like more images to our data set. Uh, by just using these different kind of methods that can that can shift and it can also like rotate and shear and screw our, our images so we can use data augmentation to reduce um, overfitting in the images because we will get more, a greater a greater variance and we will also get like a better better differences and more differences in our images when we're using data augmentation and that is really good to reduce overfitting so if you have overfitting um, in your in your convolutional neural network or like just in in, in your neural networks uh, in general then it's really good to use data augmentation and and like changing the different kind of like um, variances and differences that you can have in your images so now i'm going to show you like how we can actually like use data augmentation in keras so we have this image uh, data generator class here where we can actually like load in our data set um, so we use this image image data generator uh, function here where we can specify some of these different kind of uh, uh, functions or like parameters here inside of the function to actually like apply data augmentation on our data set so first of all, we're going to load in our data set with this image uh, data generator here, and then we can specify uh, these parameters here. So we have this rotation range here. So we need to specify like how much is our, our images uh, like allowed to, 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 to rotate. And we can also specify like the width shift or like the height shift. So if we want to like, for example, shift or uh, shift our object in both in the width and the height uh, inside of our images. If we want to like, for example, how we have cats and dogs, then we want to have it like in the start of the image and then in the, in like the end of the image and in the middle of the image. And then we probably like want to rotate it like around like uh, 20 degrees to the left and the right. Probably not like around like 180 because then it will just be uh, on its head, which is not really, uh, which is not really a, like a valid example when we're like doing a dogs and cat classification. But we can also specify some other different kind of uh, parameters here where we can have like a shear range. So much of how much we want to shear our image. And also we have this zoom range here. So if we want to like zoom out or we want to zoom, uh, zoom in on our image to actually like just have more samples uh, from the same image or like, so it, it looks like we're having multiple samples um, of our like images or like our classes, but we actually like just have one image that we're doing data augmentation on. And then we can have, for example, like four or five different kind of examples with, with different variances and also like different uh, differences in the image. And then we just load it in, we specify these parameters here. We can specify if we want to use some validation split or like some pre-processing function and stuff like that. And then we just call this function here. It will do all of the data augmentation and then it will actually like load in our data set as well and specify these different kind of parameters. And then we can just use this data set here later on to actually like try uh, train our neural network. But it's really important that we're only using data augmentation on our, on our training set. So we don't really want to use data augmentation on our validation set and our test set because we want that to be like to, valid, to, to be validation of how good our model performs and also like if we can see if our model is overfitting and, and stuff like that. So we only apply uh, data augmentation to our training set. This, that is really important. 
So we're now going to go call up here and I'm going to show like how we can actually like apply data augmentation here on uh, on a data set. So first of all, we're going to import these different kind of uh, modules here or like these classes here from Keras and, and TensorFlow. We don't really need all of them, but we used uh, those here in the, in the previous tutorial. So if you want to know like how we can create a neural network from scratch, train it on a, tr on a, on a data set. And then we're also like how we can do predictions, make sure to check those tutorials or like those videos out uh, previous here in this tutorial. So the only one we need here in this video here is actually like this image gener data generator here uh, from TensorFlow Keras pre processing image here, where we, where we have this class here that I just showed you in the slides, where we can specify the different kind of parameters for the data augmentation that we're going to apply. And then we also need this matplotlib here, so we can actually like plot the images uh, that we have applied data augmentation to. So if I run the plot of code here, we actually like load in these modules here that we use. And then I'll load in the data set that I have of these like chest x-rays here uh, from uh, Google Drive here. So we use this uh, Google, Google call up here, import drive, and we can see that I'm already connected to it. And then I can just specify these paths here where I've actually like stored uh, our, da uh, our, our data set. So we have these chest array images here. So we specify the train, validation, and test path. And then if we run this block of code here, we, have now, we have now have a path here in these variables over here to the left. And then we're gonna go down here to the actual like data generators, which I just showed you in um, in the slides. So we have this image da data generator here. And first of all, we want to rescale our image or actually like normalize our image so we get values between uh, zero and one, which is really good when we when we operating with neural networks and when we're passing it uh, through the layers of neural networks and, and, and actually like optimizing the parameters. And then we specify this rotation range here. So we specify the rotation range here uh, to be 40. We also specify a width shift range, uh, both in like a shift range in, in the width and also in the height of 0.2 here. And then we also have like a shear range. So like how much we want to shear our image when we're applying data augmentation as well. And we specify that to 0.2 as well. And we also want to zoom our image out and in here when we're applying data augmentation. So we give, get different kind of views and also like uh, like different kind of views of our images or like of the chest, chest arrays when we're applying data augmentation, which we, we, which we probably want to have in our, in our training set uh, unless we already did this uh, data augmentation here. So it's good to reduce overfitting um, in our neural networks and also just to get more samples and images to our, uh, our like training set. And then we also need to specify, or we can specify this horizontal flip here. So if you want to flip the image on uh, about like uh, uh, like over the, the horizontal axis, we could also do it on the vertical axis, but it doesn't really make sense in the case of these uh, chest chest array uh, images here. And then we have this fill mode nearest here. So this is like how it's actually like um, filling filling in the different kind of operations. So this is the um, the interpol interpolation that it's using that I went over in the computer vision tutorial. Uh, where you're talking about like how we can actually like do uh, interpolation in images. So if we're down here we can actually just has this image generator here where we just uh, rescale it as well. So this is the test set that we're that we're generating here, and up here we we are actually like generating our training set. So as I already mentioned, it is, it is really important that we're not doing data augmentation on our test and our validation set. We only do it on our training set here. Um, so we actually like can kind of reduce overfitting and then we use the, our test images and our validation images to validate that our model is not overfitting uh, even though they were using data augmentation. So down here we both have like our training training badges here. So first up here we're using this image gen data generator and then down here we're actually like loading in the images from the directory. So we're specifying the, the train path here and the target size of our image. So we have a 224 by 224 images or like the, uh, dimension. And then we have when we need to specify the batch size here, so the number of batches or like number of images that we pass uh, through our neural network at, at like at, at one pass. So we need to specify that here as well. So this is just how we can load in our data set into into these variables here. So we can then get later on use it in Keras and Google Colab up here to actually like train uh, our neural network. And we do, do that both for our training badges, our validation badges, and our test badges. And if we run this block of code here, we can see that we actually like found. 5,178 images here belong to two classes. So we have two classes that we're actually like going to classify in this neural network here. And in our training set, we have uh, 5,178 images here. And then this is like after, and then we're applying data augmentation to these images here. So we actually like have more images uh, than those here. And then we have 16 images for our validation and 624 for our test set. So if we go down here and we just want to get the images and labels so we can see like how our, our data augmentation look like. 
then we can actually like have this next function here or like this next function here which just takes the next uh, the next training batch here and store it in this image and labels here so we will store 10 images and 10 labels um, in these variables here because we have a batch size of 10 and then we're just taking the next batch in the training set here so if i'm not like blogger code here we will now have the images stored here in this ims and labels uh, variable and then down here we can actually like have a function where we're just plotting the images so we can see like how the data augmentation um, is after we applied it to the to our original images so this is just a function that we're, that we're just to plot these images here where we just pass in the image array that we want to plot and then we have these number of subplots here so we can actually like just plot them side by side so i'll just run the blog of code here and then we can go down here and actually like print print our images here and also print the corresponding labels uh, for our images so we can see here that we have these different kind of images here and those are not the original images. Uh, these images here are, we can see that they're both rotated and some of them is also like flipped and, and sheared. And some of them is also actually like, we can see here that they're actually like uh, shifted in the horizontal, um, in the horizontal um, direction here. And some of them is also like um, um, sheared here or like it is also like sheared here. We can see that um, that the image here is like sheared and it's both rotated, sheared, and it's also like moved here in in like the vertical um in the vertical direction and we can also see here it is moved in the horizontal uh, direction so these are the images that we actually like apply when after we have applied data augmentation uh, these are our input uh, like our output images from data augmentation and then we can use these images here to actually like train our neural network to reduce overfitting so it's really nice so this could this this could actually like just be one uh, one sample or like one image that we're loading from from our training set and then we just apply data augmentation to that image so we get this, these 10 different kind of images here so we actually like have more images uh, in our training set than we actually like had uh, from the beginning and we also have more variation and we have some other different kind of uh, differences in our images that, that we wouldn't have if we were just going to use all of the original images that we had in our training set so that's pretty much it for this video here guys where we know like what is data augmentation and and why should we use it and also like how we can use it because this is a really nice and cool feature and you should know about it when you're like training neural networks and especially like uh, like computational neural networks how we can generate more data from the data that we have and also to get more variations variations and differences so we actually like reduce overfitting in our neural network so when you have when you have new uh, overfitting in your neural network make sure to use data augmentation and make sure to only use it on your training set and not not your validation and test set so thank you guys for watching this video here and remember to hit the subscribe button and bell notification under the video and also like this video here if you like the content and you want more in the future it really helps me and the youtube channel out in a massive way and i just really appreciate your support so i'm currently also doing a computer vision tutorial in OpenCV with C++ plus. so if you're interested in like knowing more about different kind of operations and how we can use images and computer vision uh, I'll link to the tutorial up here or else I'll see you in the next video guys bye for now